All right, we're here with uh, Rex Walheim, uh, MS-2 of Atlantis on the last space shuttle flight in history. Getting ready to close the hatch uh, in a day and a half, I guess. Yeah, it's hard to believe. So, but uh, we wanted to interview Rex here, Mike and I, because uh, Rex is the mastermind behind the AVA that we that we uh, that we executed. Uh, Rex is a very very experienced uh, veteran spacewalker himself, and. Uh, he was our choreographer. He was the boss of us while we were outside. Uh, we are in the Quest airlock right now. Uh, here's Mike Soup uh, behind us. Mine's is right. Mine is right here, and uh, just behind me is the hatch that leads out to space uh, where we went out. So uh, we wanted to get your view on um, the mission, the the, the historic uh, significance of the of the space shuttle mission, and maybe the EVA as well. Yeah. Well, the uh, obviously it's been a, a, a very eventful training flow because we've been, you know, everything's been a last. We we watched the last rollout of the vehicle out of the orbiter processing facility and then the last rollout to the pad. And, you know, you hear a lot of these last, but they got bigger and bigger, and then it was the last launch flow. So it was... Uh, it was pretty amazing, and it, uh, it was a great to be part of, but as you guys know, when you're in a training flow, you're so focused on your training, you can't process all the significance. But every once in a while, you pause, and you, and you really do see it, especially the night, you know, when, it, when, you, when you see Atlantis rolling out the pad. It was absolutely awesome. And then you never know when launch day is going to be, because you never know if it's going to really be a launch. So it was, uh, it was a 70% chance of no-go for the weather, so we, uh, we, we thought there was a good chance we wouldn't go. But uh, sure enough, we took off, and then when he got to orbit, we realized, hey, that was the last time, uh, last time we're going to do a, an asset like that in the shuttle. But then you just get jumping full force to this mission and, and, and docking with the station, and there's hardly a chance to catch your breath. And then we got here, and uh, we were obviously prepping right away for the, uh, for the spacewalk. And so it was very, very fast paced. Now, this has been a, a very interesting uh, flow because usually the, the crew that does the spacewalk is kind of self-contained. But since I was on the ground longer than you guys were, I had the chance to, to watch these, these, this training in the pool. And that was, uh, that was uh, very interesting. So I helped to do some of the runs. And then we also got a chance to uh, do a couple runs with you guys in IV. And uh, then to see it all come together was absolutely amazing. The, the most unique part for me, I think, was uh, uh, I was sitting in the aft flight deck of the of the shuttle, and I kind of felt like I was at the NBL, at the neutral buoyancy lab, where we do our practice uh, practice runs because I couldn't see you guys at all. And uh, and then you guys came around the corner of the PMA, and there's my buddies outside in the spacesuit. It was just the weirdest sight because I I haven't been an IV uh, when somebody else is uh, outside and watched the spacewalk for nine years since STS-110. So for me, it was uh, it was a really neat experience to see you guys come around the bend and to, and to see your faces and uh, and and uh, get to conduct it while uh, while you guys were. Uh, where you guys are kind of right in front of me. So uh, it was a, a great experience. It's, it's one of those things where when you're preparing for it, you know, is, do we have all the loose ends tied, and do we, have we covered all the tasks? But, uh, and so you're always wondering that, but, but boy, that EVA was textbook. I was so proud of these guys. They did such a great job. They got all their tasks done, including an extra task. So it was, a, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Well, Rex, we, we thank you for, for your leadership on that. You, you, you were just amazing out there. And, and you know, I want to... I want to ask Mike. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess we got to cut there. Okay. Well, we're back with you. We had to take a break here for a second because we had a uh, space station alarm, but everything's okay. Uh, but what I was what I was about to ask Mike is, um, what, Mike went out of the hatch first, and and when I went outside the hatch. Um, when I looked down, I saw just the most beautiful sight. I saw the, the Bahamas, and I think we're going to try and put some pictures of exactly what we saw. But uh, we saw the Bahamas, and it was just absolutely breathtaking. And I mentioned it, and during the EVA, during the spacewalk, to Mike, wow, we have a, have a beautiful planet. And, the, and the, another moment that I want to talk about real quick is when the, when the spacewalk was over and it was time to go inside, Mike decided that we were going to spend about five more minutes outside because the sun was about to come, come up. And with the both of us hanging on the bottom of the uh, airlock, we together watched uh, this orbital sunrise, and it was just breathtaking. And so, Mike, I wanted to ask you. You know, one of the one of the objectives of Fragile Voice is to, is to use that orbital perspective, to use this this view that we have in space, to inspire people to make a difference on our planet. Right. Um, so, how can we commu I mean, from what you've seen on your on your, how many? Let me see. Let me count real quick. Uh, <laughs> seven. seven spacewalks on your seven spacewalks. You know, how, how can you communicate that? that vision, that view that you've seen to well, inspire people to make a difference? You know, I think really uh, life is a lot like a spacewalk. You know, we're outside for six and a half hours or so, and we're working so hard, 
we don't take the time to look down. You know, a, a quick glance and see the Bahamas, that's great. You know, a quick glance, we see Kennedy Space Center. You know, but you, don't, you just don't take the time to look around and appreciate the beauty of where you are and what you're doing. And that's why I really wanted, at the end of the, uh, the spacewalk, the clock is ticking, but our work is done, and we're not late. And just take a few minutes. You know, you and I may never be there again. And just take a few minutes, though, and appreciate where we are. And to, it was night, and you can't really see, you know, much of the planet at night. You could look down, you could see cities, you could see lightning, you know, and stuff like that. But I wanted to see, you know, one more time the, 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 the sunlight as it bursts and it explodes over the horizon in, in these furious bands of color that are growing over several minutes as the sunrise is coming. And it's a phenomenal thing to see through a thin little plexiglass fishbowl that's over our heads. And just to absorb that experience and, and that view, and that I think we all need to do that more of this beautiful place that we live, is take the time to appreciate it. And whether you're 220 miles in space going 17 and a half thousand miles an hour, or you're in your backyard, right. take the opportunity to appreciate it You know, for what it is. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. and, it, and it is fragile, and we need to take care of it. And but what, you know, just most of all, uh, wherever, and, and you can go out your, into your backyard or go out away from the city lights, and look up into the sky at night, and you can see a sky very much like we can see if you get away from the city lights, that, that we can see without the air that's interrupting the flow of the starlight to our eyes, and you can see that same thing out in the country, but you've got to get away from the lights, and you've got to get a little quiet, and you have to look around and, and, and adapt to the silence sometimes, and, uh, and see the beauty for what it is. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Rex, what do you think? I mean, well, I think the thing that, that, that gets me about the fragility of the Earth is when, you're, when you look at the, the horizon of the Earth, especially after a sunrise or a sunset, there's this brilliant blue, blue band, and it's, it's hard to describe to people it's just how vibrant it is. And as brilliant and beautiful as it is, you think to yourself, that is all there is of our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you know we're about 200 miles up, and that atmosphere, for all intents and purposes, maybe goes 10, you know, 15 miles or so before it tails off, and you get the sensation that if there was a good gust of orbital wind or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that it could blow off. That's the only thing that keeps us alive. And it's this thin little band, and it's just uh, absolutely breathtaking to see that it, that's what hugs our Earth, and that's what keeps us alive, right? Sobering. There. Sobering. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Well, listen. Tomorrow night we're gonna. We're going to uh, close the hatch in about 20, less than 24 hours from now. We're yeah, going right. to close the hatch. This is one of the four people that are, are going to be on the other side of the hatch, yep. and uh, we're going to say goodbye to him tomorrow. So it was a uh, well, we could say goodbye now too on on, yeah. on, on the camera here. Right. So you know, we want to thank you for for the, the, your leadership on the EVA, your your hard work on the EVA. You re you represent a very big team of, yep. of people who were involved in the EVA. So we want to thank you for that, and we want to wish you Godspeed and. Uh, and uh, safe landing back at the Kennedy Space Center in a couple of days. My pleasure, Ronnie. It was an absolute pleasure working with you guys, and I, and I can't tell you how impressed I am with how well you guys did. You know, you guys left the planet a long time ago, relatively speaking, for EVAs, yeah. and you guys did some of those tasks you've never seen in the water, and we talked about them in advance, but we didn't have a whole lot of time, and you guys went out there and just took charge and, and got the job done. Yeah, so exciting. thanks. And, and sharing your home, this has been a wonderful experience, and we really appreciate having the chance to come up here and, and spend some time with you guys. It's been a great experience. All right, thanks, man. Great. Thanks. All right, thanks. Oops, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs>